you are not going to believe your eyes. You're not going to believe your eyes. Some of this stuff is crazy. Some of it is legitimately crazy. These are some trends I am not, I refuse, I will not wear in 2023. And then some that I'm so excited about. I can't wait to share them with you in today's video. This is Netta. Welcome to my channel. My whole goal for this channel, as you know, is to help you build a wardrobe that you love so you look beautiful and feel confident every single day. I, part of building a wardrobe and part of looking confident and feeling confident in our clothes is buying what's currently in stores. And that means addressing the elephant in the room, which is trends, trends. So often I get pushback when I'm talking about trends and I get it. I think many of you might think that I it, I am the one who came up with these trends and I'm trying to push you all to get rid of everything in your wardrobe that you that we built together in 2021 and 2022 and start over and buy all new clothes and just throw it all out. And often that's the message that we can get or that's the feeling that we can get when we're approaching a new season. We're looking at trends. We're looking at what's available. We're like, oh my gosh, does that mean nothing that I have works anymore? You're not alone. I go through this too. And there are trends that I do not not like and trends I will definitely not be adopting or adapting. I never know which word to use in that scenario. And I am an English person. Um, but I, 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 you know, there are trends that I'm just not going to, to buy into. I don't love them. They don't feel like me. And so we're all in this together. The difference between me and you is that I've made this my job to help help bring this to a level that we can all kind of approach and look at for our own wardrobes and decide what we're going to take and what we're going to leave behind because that is always the option for us. When I talk about looking modern and contemporary, um, it, that doesn't mean that every micro trend needs to show up in your wardrobe. Then I think we end up looking like a fashion victim. So we're trying to find that balance between our clothes looking like we bought them in this set century, right? And not looking like we um, are changing our total aesthetic every 10 minutes. So that balance is something that we're all striving for, um, especially uh, over 30, over 40. I really think that, and I've said this before, I think trends are important. I think finding a couple of, of gems from what is available and new every season is really important. And it's an important way of loving your wardrobe again, refreshing your style, staying current, staying modern looking. But that doesn't mean that we're gonna we're going to start over again every season. Um, it, it just means bringing in a couple of new pieces that could update your wardrobe for the season. Again, this is one of those opportunities to bring in my cluster concept to consider when you're updating your wardrobe for spring for example three tops two bottoms and a jacket you're gonna have lots of options there if you want to and if you choose to buy six items many of you will choose to buy nothing but if you do that could be one way of approaching updating your wardrobe and bringing in a couple of new trends for the season there are a lot of trends here that you're never going to see on me. You're never going to see on me. Um, and I, I don't consider myself, uh, I, I, I like new things and I am not resistant to new things. Some of these are just, they're not me. Um, I'm not going, I don't find them flattering. I find them hard to wear. And so I, I kind of wanted to, to, to start with the trends that I will not be wearing in 2023. Trends you will not see on me in 2023. You can mark my words. I might have to eat my words on some of them, but I think most of them I'm going to I'm going to kind of draw a hard line that these are not going to enter my wardrobe. Now, what what happens to former trends? They don't completely disappear. They just kind of go into a little bit more of a classic zone. So, for example, when these straight leg and um uh, you know, flare and bootleg jeans started coming back in, you know, a few years ago, skinny jeans didn't completely disappear into oblivion. They just became more classic. And that's kind of what you're going to see with a lot of these um, these trends this year. We're seeing another kind of shift. And so the things that we were wearing are not going to be out of style. They're just going to move into a bit more of a classic and a less of a trendy um, territory. OK, so keep that in mind. That's why we're not we're not starting over. Um, also, if you really want to look at building a timeless wardrobe, you're going to want to stay away from extremes and you're going to want to stay away from micro trends. So for example, instead of super skinny jeans or super baggy jeans, which are happening in 2023, you might want to go for more of a classic straight leg jean. Um, if you, if you want to 
stay away from um, you know crazy extremes and rises. Um, we've had ridiculously high rise jeans the last few years, some of them like over the top high rise. And now we're seeing low rise. Uh, mid rise is not going anywhere. So staying in the middle, staying in the middle, staying neutral and, and not going to one extreme or the other in terms of trends um, is one of the ways that you can keep your wardrobe more timeless. And the pieces, especially that you're investing in, you want to, to kind of keep those um, uh, away from the extremes because it's going to make it a little bit more, um, you're going to have more longevity from those pieces. It can get a little boring sometimes to keep it in the middle. So if there's an extreme that you love, go for it. Just recognize that in, in six months time, I might be telling you that that is out. Like that's just the way trends work. I wish it wasn't like that, but at the same time they do offer, so I have a love-hate relationship in case you can't tell with trends. They offer us a way to update our wardrobes and to stop being, you know, to, to not get bored. But at the same time, sometimes they're telling me to not wear something that I have come to love. So we're seeing trends that are all over the place. There is literally something for everybody this season from from lots of very minimal tailored, lots a, a big emphasis on tailoring, a big emphasis on suits, a big emphasis on utilitarian pieces and cargo pockets and functional wardrobes. And then at the other extreme, there's like, 70s and 80s disco references. There are head to toe sequins, there's shine, there's sparkle, there's glitter, there's embellishments, there's maximalism. So you've got both ends of the spectrum when it comes to style. And I really do feel like this year there is something for everybody. The same can be said for color. We're seeing lots of neutrals, every kind of neutral worn with every other kind of neutral, a neutral, 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 head to toe neutral outfits. And then we're seeing acid green. We're seeing a little bit of magenta, even though that's the color of 2023. It's not showing up as much in clothing, but we're seeing, we're still seeing holdovers of the Barbie pink from 2022. I will definitely continue to wear that. We're seeing that acid green. We're seeing the magenta. We're seeing cobalt blue, which could arguably can be considered the color of 2023 in terms of fashion. We're seeing a lot of cobalt blue come back in stores. It's a great color for a lot of people. So if you love blue, this is your season to stock up on some cobalt blue. Um, and then we're seeing sapphire. Saffron red. We're seeing quite a bit of, of my favorite bright red in stores this season. So again, we're all over the place in terms of color, in terms of style. We've got neutral, um, utilitarian. We've got maximal and really bright colors. So there is something for everybody this season. Let's talk about a couple of things that are a little, a little controversial that might be coming back. I have heard a buzz that capris are back. Capris are back. After years and years of me telling everybody not to wear capris, they're saying that capris are back. I haven't seen this show up in stores yet. We'll have to wait and see what happens in 2023. If this is something that actually filters down to stores and in terms of being a trend accessory or a trend item, I think what we're going to see is more of the crops and more of the shorter pants that we've seen the last few years, because let's face it, nobody, nobody has the energy, it seems anymore to find pants that are the right length for their shoes. And we've all taken that off the table by just making pants in some cases, awkwardly short and in other cases, short in a cool way. So we're going to see, I think, more of the wide leg crop pants, and we're going to see more um, ankle pants that look like what Audrey Hepburn or Jackie O would have worn, um, and not the capri pant that I, you know, that hugs the calf that I've been telling you to avoid for years. I don't think we're going to see that. I pray we don't see that. And even if we do see that, doesn't mean we need to start wearing it because that's going to look very different on a 20 year old who thinks it's modern and trendy or hip than it is going to look on me at 50 where it's going to look like, oh. Oh, she's wearing, she's wearing, you know, old lady pants or whatever. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just, that's, that's my take on capris. I don't think we're really going to see capris like they say we're going to see capris. What we may be more likely to see by the end of 2023 is skinny jeans. Yeah. So if you've held on to your favorite skinny jeans, I always encourage you to just keep your favorites and your bests from whatever categories are, are currently out of circulation. Skinny jeans, jeans, they're saying are going to be making a comeback by the end of 2023. We're not seeing it yet. Instead, we're seeing oversized, huge baggy jeans, but I think the pendulum always swings back and forth. And so some of your favorite pieces, provided they, they fit and they're flattering and they check all the other boxes, um, are worth holding on to. Skinny jeans come back, stay tuned. Um, these trends are making me dizzy, that's all I'm saying. Okay, let's talk about trends that I will not be wearing in 2023. One is extreme low rise. 
I used to love low, low rise back in the Britney first getting started era. I have a short torso, low rise just worked for me. I had had no kids. I could rock the low rise look. Even then, I, my belly has never been my favorite part of my body, even back then. But the low rise worked for me. It was leg, I mean, it was um, torso elongating. Um, I thought it was cool. It was edgy. It looked really new at the time. It is very much back, and the lower the better. Of course, they're wearing the low rise with cropped tops so that you show your belly and all of the things. Um, this is not for me. Um, I think for most of us, we're going to go with the other um, offshoot of this trend, which is a mid-rise. So mid to slightly higher rise. You just want to avoid the super high-rise pants that end up up here. Um, many of us were not wearing those anyway because they're not wearable. So let's just keep wearing. I'm just going to keep wearing the pants I've been wearing. I'm going to keep wearing a little bit of a higher rise because it holds my stomach in. I'm going to wear a mid-rise. Um, I'm going to skip the low rise. My abs just can't take it anymore. And um, some places say that the high rise is really going out of style. What it really means is, the, is that the high rise is going to become a little bit more classic and the low rise is going to become trendy. And mid rise is always a good way to just sidestep this issue. Um, another trend I will not be wearing, maxi denim skirts. Maxi denim skirts. I have talked often about how long, stiff skirts are really hard to wear. Like midi denim and midi leather skirts can be unflattering. A maxi denim skirt to me looks... I just think it looks really sloppy. It's really boxy. It's really hard to wear. I feel like you'd have to be really tall to be able to pull this off. I kind of feel like this was the required homeschool mom uniform about 10 years ago. And I'm not, I'm not here for that. Like I am not, they're not cute at all. I feel like someone is playing a practical joke on us. I'm like, I don't know what's going on. Like that's not cute. Um, Another trend that I will not be diving into, at least not in the way I'm saying it on the runways, is sheer clothing, especially sheer dresses. I don't really see an application for a sheer dress in my actual life. I cannot imagine just running to Publix with my underwear showing. I kind of like to keep my underwear to myself. Um, and I, I just, I don't see this as being a trend that's going to really show up in real life. We're going to see this, of course, on the red carpet. We're going to see celebrities and pop stars wearing this. I don't really think most of us are going to be wearing sheer dresses. Instead, what we can do is we can have sheer insets into things that are going to be beautiful. Um, sheer sleeves, you know, black, you can even do a sheer blouse with a cami or if you're a little more daring than I am a pretty bra underneath it like a sheer blouse but a head to toe sheer outfit I, I just can't see that happening so um, you're going to have to decide how how sheer you want to go if you think a sheer um, dress is an option for you you're going to need to get the right under things to wear underneath that sheer dress. I will not be wearing sheer dresses. I think this would be a beautiful look, actually, if you if you really love the sheer look um, over a bathing suit on vacation or in a really resorty setting, like maybe you could do something like that. But overall, for me, it's going to be about the sheer blouse for me. I'm going to skip sheer dresses. Um, we'll see. We'll see how that plays out in, in actual stores and how that filters down to clothes that we can actually buy. Another trend you won't, something you're not going to see of me in 2023 is my bum, my bottom. There is a real emphasis on the bottom that comes with the whole low rise trend, but also the cutouts. There's a real focus on the base of the spine there and showing that part of your body off. I will not be showing that part of my body off. Nobody needs to see my underwear um, or my pants hanging, barely hanging onto my body. I will not be showing my bottom in, in public to anybody. I just... I, I don't get it. I don't get it. I mean, I know, I know I'm not 20 anymore and that some 20 year olds are going to be like, oh, that's really, really cute. Go for it. If that's your thing, if you're 20, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a little bit more modest than that. And it's just not something I am personally going to be embracing. Um, if you really like that look on you, then, you know, then more power to you. You will find it in stores. The really low rise is going to enable you to show as much of or as little of your backside as possible or as you want. Another trend I won't be embracing, I, I kind of got into it the first time around. I definitely am not going to get into it this time around, and that's grunge. Um, I really like, I liked Nirvana back in the day. I liked some of those, like, long dresses. The, the plus side of grunge this time around is that the beauty, the hair, the makeup is more polished than it was the last time around. But no, I will not be wearing grunge in um, 2023, at least not in its full iteration. Um, I'm not going to go for, like, 
sad sack shapeless dresses or a lot of tattered hems we're seeing a lot of grunge and i i'm more here for the glamour aspect of 2023 than i am for the grunge aspect that's just a personal style thing i just feel like it's not me anymore okay handkerchief hems hanky hems on tops and skirts and dresses we haven't seen this in a minute um i like it but I'm short, so I can't, like, this, those types of hems make sure people look shorter. Um, I'm still wrapping my brain around this. This is, this is a kind of like, I'm on the fence about this trend. I'm a little bit on the fence about the handkerchief hem trend. Um, it's going to take me a minute to, like, wrap my brain around how this is going to look in the 2023 version, because all I can picture is the 1990s versions that I used to love. But again, they're not super petite friendly, the dresses and skirts, um, but if you love them, wear them. They're totally back. Um, another thing I will not be wearing is bras as, as tops. I, again, I like to keep my underwear to myself. I won't be wearing bras as tops. I don't love my abs. Nobody needs to see that part of my body. It's not my favorite. Um, I'm just not gonna be wearing a bra as a top. If you, if that's your thing and, and you, you can rock that look and you wanna rock that look, you go for it. Um, I, it's not, it's not, it's not happening for me. Um, maybe if I was young and tanned and daring, but even then, like it just, I don't think that would have ever been my, my aesthetic. Another trend that I will not be wearing in 2023, but many of you are going to love, is a cargo pant. It's just not my style. But cargo pants, cargo jeans, like tons of pockets, cargo jackets, like that that's all part of the utilitarian thing that's happening right now in style. And if you love it, cargo pants are definitely 100% back. I'd rather carry my stuff in my purse, thank you very much. But if you love all those pockets, go for it. It's a trend. Now, things that I'm on the fence about, trends that I'm on the fence about, embellished denim. I cannot think of embellished denim without thinking about the White House black market jackets from 10 years ago and a look that's more mature and a little bit more frumpy. Um, I can't think of embellished denim as being something that's in style. It's been so out for so long. And now we're seeing studs and sparkles and bedazzled denim. Like, I'm worried that this is going to make us look older after a certain age. And that this is the kind of thing that maybe we should say for 20 year olds who are never going to look old in a really sparkly denim jacket. I don't know. We'll see how this again plays out in stores. It's a little too early to tell. We're only in the second week of January. Like, it's a little too early to tell. Let's see how this actually looks when it shows up in stores. But embellished denim is something. I'm kind of on the fence about. Another thing I'm on the fence about is drop waists. Drop waists are great for like adding shape to hips if you don't have um, a lot of shape in your hips, but they can also accentuate a tummy a little. Um, I still love drop waist styles, but I feel like they're kind of, it's kind of hard for them to be flattering. So let's see what that looks like in stores again to be determined, dot, dot, dot. We'll see what that looks like when it ends up in stores. Power shoulders. I love power shoulders. I love power shoulders. I love the look, um, but I have a little bit of a strong, you know, flattery wise, I have a little bit of a strong shoulder anyway. Um, and so I would go for a little bit more of a subtle power shoulder. Um, I'm kind of on the fence on about this. Like I like it in some iterations, other versions I don't like. I'm kind of intrigued to see how a power shoulder plays out. It can definitely, accentuating your shoulder can definitely make the rest of your body look slimmer. It can make your waistline look slimmer. It can make your hips look smaller. Um, so it can be very flattering on a lot of people and I'm, I'm kind of I'm kind of waiting to see what this looks like um they do add height also and you know I I need that I'm five two bubble skirts bubble skirts I don't even know why I need to just admit that I really am excited about bubble skirts and not that I'm on the fence about them I just don't know where I'm gonna wear them in my regular life but I love bubble skirts I mean I had a Christian in 1987 for homecoming at Warner Christian Academy I had a hot uh, not a hot pink actually it was a light pink um bubble skirt uh dupe dress made by my mom it was like an imitation of a Christian LaCroix dress that went down the runway that year it was a short pink bubble skirt confection that I adored and it was just so much fun and they're so 80s and I never thought they would be back there's so much of the 80s in stores right now so much of the 80s that's my era um but the style of the 80s is a little hard to swallow sometimes right like looking back we're like oh what was I thinking well we're seeing a lot of that right now so bubble skirts um I want it back. I'm not going to lie. But where are we going to wear it? Stay tuned. I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued. Don't hang up on me. Don't, don't unfollow. Uh, let's just see where this leads us. 
Corsets. Okay, again with the 80s. Remember there's a, a designer called Vicky Teal and she just made corsets for the stars back in the 80s. Does anyone else remember this? It's an, kind of, I think it's kind of an obscure reference. But we're seeing a lot of corsets and we're also seeing a lot of like body armor looking tops. Now, I tried this Antonio Milani kind of corseted top back in the fall that I loved um, and it was beautiful and flattering. So, you know, maybe corset inspired details or seams on tops are going to be really feminine and flattering, but a full corset style top is not something that is, is going to be part of my everyday attire. Like I'm not going to wear that to the drugstore to pick up my prescription. Um, but we might find a version that works. Now I'm gonna go on to trends that I love. Yeah, we're, we're a couple of minutes in and I'm talking about, I'm finally getting to the stuff that I'm really excited about in 2023. The first is knee length skirts. Knee length skirts, hello! At last, at last, at last. I mean, we have had micro minis, midis, and maxis for the last 60 million years, and none of my clients, and myself included, can find a classic knee length dress or knee length skirt for work or for a wedding or for any event that we're looking for. They're back, they're back. Knee length skirts are back. Um, and it is really the easiest and most flattering skirt length for most women. You just want to find a spot on your knee that you like, and it, it's just the most flattering and really the most classic. Don't know how they ever disappeared from stores, but they did. Pencil skirts are also back. We're seeing a lot more pencil skirts this season. I'm here for it. If you've got an hourglass body type like me, pencil skirt is going to be a go-to for you, and I'm so glad that they're going to be a little bit more readily available again. Um, stilettos and pointy toes, you know I'm here for that. A stiletto heel is the heel of 2023. I know some of you are gonna balk at that and I get it, you have to you have to find what works for you, but stiletto heels are definitely the thing for 2023. And so are pointy toes. I really was thinking that we were gonna be veering off into square or maybe going more into round, um, but it's, point, it's all about the pointy toe for 2023. I love it, it's elongating, it's, um, elegant, it's beautiful, it's flattering. Um, if you do not think that you could wear a pointy toe, um, first of all, um, I know many of you can't, just, just go for a more almond or a more elongated toe and just avoid the aggressively round toes. I will say my Vivaya shoes, um, the pointy toe flats from Vivaya are breathable and flexible and work on a variety of feet, even those with bunions, and that can be a way to buy into the pointy toe um, trend and still make it comfortable. Also recognize the fact that your toes don't actually go into the point part. They, they stop short of that. So people are like, oh, my feet aren't shaped like that. Well, neither are mine, um, but it, it can still work. Um, now let's talk about goddess dressing. I love this because for the last few years, it's been hard to find draped, ruched, shirred, gathered, wrapped clothing unless you're looking in a maternity department. And it's so flattering on a lot of people. Any of us who need to define our waist a little more, any of the styled out blue ladies, um, that's just a great flattering look. Those gathered go Greek goddess inspired dresses and they're having a moment. So hopefully we're going to be able to find a lot more of those gathered dresses that are really, really flattering to our changing bodies and our more mature bodies like I think they are um, a game changer for a lot of women when you, when you can find that that wrapping and draping and it just does all sorts of magic in terms of flattery Okay, one I absolutely love, full ball gown skirts and tall skirts. We haven't seen that like nipped in waist with a full skirt, like the 1950s Christian Dior new look inspired um, and Sarah Jessica Parker from the 90s inspired full skirt in a minute. And I'm so excited. It's here. I think it's so feminine. It's beautiful on everybody. It's flattering on everybody. And it's just so classic and so feminine and so I don't know I just love it I love it it's the era that I fell in love with um, movies you know in in my my teens and even younger and you know those beautiful full dresses and I just I love it I'm so excited about it um, shine, shine, shine. I'm excited about shine. There is La May. There's La May. We, we're, I, it's, I started seeing a little La May last year. It's full on La May this year. We're seeing that shiny um, fabric. We're seeing a lot of silver. We're seeing silver pants and silver shoes and silver everything. And I love the shine. I love the shine. We're also seeing sequins for day and we're seeing head to toe sequins. So shine there's a whole 80s 70s like shine 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 um that's something i absolutely love 
and we can work in a little shiny piece into our normal everyday outfits and have that that fun look the next thing is leather 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 i love leather i have always loved leather leather never goes out of style it's always in style we're always seeing some variety of leather but now we're seeing head-to-toe leather which as a petite might be a little bit harder to pull off but i'm willing to try it i'm willing to give it a try i really like we're seeing every kind of version of leather. We're going to see light colored leather, dark colored leather. We're going to see like motocross inspired leather. I don't know where that comes from. Just any and every type of leather pant, leather jacket, leather dress, leather item in your clothing. I love it. I'm excited about it. Okay, I'm losing my voice in case you can't tell. Lace and general fanciness. General fanciness, like Baroque inspired clothing, lots of lace, lots of velvet. Velvet is definitely making a big comeback. Um, vel you know, lace shoes, velvet shoes, lace tops, velvet tops. It's beautiful and I love it. Um, I also love the new cut work tops, the broderie on glass tops, the eyelet tops. Um, just another kind of variation on that lace look. It's so feminine. It's so pretty. I'm absolutely here for that in 2023. And then the final trend that I that I'm I'm embracing in 2023 and one I've never let go of is big bags. Now we've seen little, little, little bags in style forever um, and now there are big bags and they're huge. Some of these are like luggage. I'm not gonna carry that, but I'm very happy that the Prada bag and the Louis bag that I've carried on repeat for the last several years that are my classic go-to larger bags um, that they are now officially back in style. So I'm embracing the big bag thing. I might even need to buy another one in 2023 and that's it that's my take on the 2023 trends those i love those i'm kind of on the fence about and then the ones that you definitely will not be uh seeing me wearing at the top of that list really has got to be the butt outfits and no one's going to see me in a butt outfit no one's going to see me in a bra um, no one's going to see me in something completely sheer what which of these trends are you actually excited to wear in your wardrobe in 2023 and which are you like these people are crazy. Why are they talking about all this stuff? Like, I'm not going to wear any of this stuff. Let me know in the comments. This is fun. This is not, again, um, a, a directive from me to go change all your clothes. We're going to just bring in a couple of fun pieces that we like this season and ignore the rest. Um, that's how we build a wardrobe that reflects us and doesn't just reflect what's happening in style at that moment. Um, Everything has to come through the filter of our lifestyle, our personal style, and our body type. Those are the three, those are the three velvet ropes that you use to determine what makes it into your closet and what doesn't. Um, I hope you found this helpful and fun. Um, let me know what you think in the comments below. Which of these is your favorite? Which do you absolutely hate? Um, don't forget to like this video if you want to see more trend videos or if you want me to dive into them a little bit more. Um, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Most fun place to be on YouTube, and we would love to have you join us. Love you guys. Bye.